Welcome to the Coast Podcast. I'm Emily, a virtual assistant agency owner who left Amazon in 2019 to build my dream. And I'm Whitney, a freelance writer and communications consultant who never felt at home in a cube farm. We didn't see many people paving their own ways like we decided to, so we created this podcast to talk to others who were brave enough to pick a different path. Creatives, entrepreneurs, people doing their careers and their lives their way. Join us as we learn from them, get inspired, and show you beautiful paths less traveled. Not every road leads to the coast, but the ones that do come with a great view. It's Emily G and Whitney P back up in the studio. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding. We actually are back in the studio. Um, we are so excited to be back after a short break today. Um, we're going to be talking with a former guest, and this is her third time. Times two. Yeah, third time yes. on, and we will link previous episodes in the show note, but I'm going to let Whitney introduce her. Today we have Sam Nelson back. Hi, I'm Whitney Popa. And we are so excited to talk to her about human design. You know, we're huge nerds about human design. And Sam's going to get even deeper into your charts and everything. We gave her free reign to talk about whatever she wants. And she wants to talk about profile numbers. So make sure you listen to the first two episodes with Sam before you get into this, if you are not a pro like we are. But we are really excited to dig in even deeper because human design is all about you and your way of being in the world. And this is just so insightful for all of us. And make sure you get a reading with her too, because um, I tell everybody, I actually had a a discovery call with like a a male realtor yesterday. And I was like, but have you done your human design? (laughs) So you know, if you even need me, like if this is the right strategy for you, and that's what we're going to dig into even more today. And I have absolutely like no shame about telling everybody that they need to know Sam and her work. So welcome back, Sam. You are our first third timer. Well, thank you so much. I'm super excited to be back and talking about profile numbers and diving deeper into your guys' charts. Um, I'm super pumped. A lot of questions I get asked are about profile numbers and like, what do they mean? Um, So for me, like I'm a three, five splendid projector. Um, Whitney, you're a two, four emotional manifesting generator and Emily, you're a six, two emotional generator. And so a lot of times people come in and they see these numbers and they want to know where they come from and what they mean. Um, a lot of times I seem to, I believe I say I collect two fours. Most people think that you will kind of gravitate towards more your type as in like projectors would kind of move with projectors and manifesting generators with manifesting generators. But in actuality, the more common is for people that have the same profile numbers to actually end up finding each other. Opposites are also true because you're still completing each other's charts, but typically the two fours, like Max the two four. So it's not shocking that you guys are both, or like your best friend, um, Carly is also a two four. So it's kind of funny. How- EJ is a two four. Who is? EJ. And you don't, there you go. You don't like kids. I mean, you do like kids, but like <laughs> kids, you know, but he like naturally gravitated toward you. It was really funny. Yeah. What you're saying is that she is supposed to like EJ because he's a two, four. Yeah. Like, these are my people. Nice, like, vibing. Like friends. <laughs> yeah. And what's funny too is like when, you know, I always have an ulterior motive when I'm like, let me buy you Sam for Christmas. And that's what I did with Carly. And I had no, we're so different. And so similar, like what's interesting is I feel very grounded and calm with her, which is, I have that experience with very few people in my life. There's just something about her aura. And I had no idea that it was that we're just built the same in that way too. And my husband's a two, four. And then what you just said, Emily uh, or Sam about Emily, the six, two, my daughter is a generator six, two. 
I just sent you her chart because I was looking at it this past weekend. So that's crazy. You and Bianca are meant to be. That's funny Biffles, because Emily. Yeah, your daughter is the same as me, and then my son is the same as you. EJ is the same profile mm-hmm. as you, almost the same. But I mean, not really, but like the same at surface level, right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I think that and is. I'm pretty sure Oliver is the three five. Oliver is the three five, like me. He's the equivalent yeah. of hold your beverage. He's just quiet about it right now. Yeah, that's <laughs> so funny. It is great. Like I totally forgot your husband was a two four until I was like, wait a minute, there he is. Like I pulled him up, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, the two fours, they're everywhere. So are you going to go like number by number and tell us like characteristics of each one, or like how do you want to do it? Yes, for sure. So I want to let you know where to find it in your charts also. Um, So if you pull up your chart, I don't know if you guys have your charts present. Um, If you pull up your chart, you're going to see down the right side of the body graph, there are a bunch of black squares. And down the left side, there are a bunch of red squares. And the left side red is going to be your design side. That's more your unconscious. Um, And then on the right side, the black side is your personality side. And that is more conscious to you. Um, So basically any... Any chart is going to have, at the top two, you're going to have your sun gate. And in your sun gate, um, so for example, Whitney, your sun gate on the personality side is 33.2. So that 0.2 is going to be the two in your chart. So that one comes first, and then, which is odd because they're on opposite sides, so I get it. But then you go to the design side, and that's a 24.4. And so that 0.4 is what gives you your four. Um, So Emily, your top right is 62.6. So that's that 0.6. That's where you get your six. And then on your design side, it's 3.2. So that's just showing what gates are activated. So it's um, it's gate three, but it's 0.2. And so that's just kind of one step below. And so that two is where you get your six two from. So that's just where you're going to find your numbers and where they correlate in your chart. Um, I don't know if you guys knew where those were, but that's they're just at the top. It's at the decimal point. It's just kind of one step further down. Um, and so that's why it's kind of cool too, because, you know, like this is where the nuances of human design are so great because you are like Whitney, for example, you are a two, four, right. But you're a 33.2 where your husband is a 25.2. So that's where there's so many differences that still can come in. Like you're the same, but you're so different. Um, and then you're a 24.4. And he's a 10.4. So obviously it's just different activations in the chart that gives you those numbers because each, so each gate that we see everywhere on your body graph where you see a number, each one of those gates is broken down into six lines. And those six lines that are in each is what dictates what your profile number is. So like yours is 25 or sorry, that's your hubs. Yours is 33.2. And so it's the second gate in the, or it's the second line in the gate of 33 that dictates that you're a two there. Does that make sense? Okay, good. You're nodding. I like that. Yes. Um, yes. So basically um, you look at where the decimal points are and that's where you can find, or you just look to the left side of the chart and it'll tell you. The first three lines, one, two, and three are basically This is a really great indication of how you learn um, and how you're meant to kind of absorb things. So a first line, anywhere that there's a first line, and you can notice also in your chart, depending what, like you have your primary lines, which your primary profile, which is going to be like the two, four or the six, two, but you can look down the chart and there's decimals in every single square. So every single one on the way down, it can tell you what line is activated in your earth, your north node, your south node, uh, moon, all the way down the right side. And so you can see where your activation is in each of those gates if you really want to scroll it down the rabbit hole. So if you just see like an abundance of a certain number um, in the decimals, kind of pay attention to that because that can be very prevalent in your um, in your personality, especially on the right side. And then, like I said, the left side's more unconscious. So these are things that other people are going to see more naturally than you will. A lot of things, um, a lot of things you'll, you'll hear about it and then you'll say, okay, wait a minute. Like that does resonate with me or it's something that other people will project on you. So it's really great to have that knowledge because if somebody sees you in a certain way, but you don't see that in yourself, or if, I guess if everybody sees you in this certain way, but you don't see it, it's really nice when you can read up on it and be like, oh my God, this is why people are responding to me in this way. 
or this is why people approach me in this way is because they see me as this authority on this, or they see me as the person can, that can solve all the problems. It might not be something you know you carry, but they see it. So is that like, you know, your rising sign in astrology, like how other people perceive you? Is that kind of the same thing or does it correlate at all? Yeah. Astrology is definitely brought into human design. And that's why um, a lot of times, depending what's in transit and what gates are activated, um, it can it can change what's amplified and what's not, depending on what planetary placement is where. Because if you go down the squares, it's your sun, it's your earth, it's your north node, south node. So depending on where the planetary placement is, it definitely changes. So it's not... Human design isn't really stagnant. A lot of people, it is very fixed on where you were born and when, but everything still has these moving parts to it that change as life changes, essentially, as things change in the sky, the world, the universe, it all kind of comes back. Um, So with the 12 profiles, I'm going to start with the first line. So the first line is known as the investigator, the teacher. They learn by understanding Um, This is a person that is driven to get to the bottom of things. Their shadow side can be fear, um, which makes a lot of sense for them because they want to know all the answers. They need to know all the answers because they want that stability. So usually first lines are the type that something will peak them and they're like, I need to go to get a book on this and I need to deep dive. It is like the bookworm type, like I'm going to read through everything. They always, they need to know the full scope of like all information. They need to be well prepared. Um, Like I said, they feel secure when they have the knowledge and the facts, like to back things up. That's how they feel safe. Um, They're driven to know what they need to know. So if it's not something that's necessary for them, a lot of times they can just kind of push it off to the side or if it's not something that excites them because they don't need to know it, which is great. Where this becomes a shadow side is when they feel like they need to know everything because they'll just so get so consumed by it that they need to find all the answers and nobody has all the answers. Um, They're really, they're naturally curious and they really want to get to the bottom of the things they need to know how things work. Um, They can get caught in over preparing. So like, this is kind of a thing where they, they feel like they're, like they're not prepared. And so they're afraid to take action Um, but they are meant to, they're meant to share what they have. Like they are absolutely meant to share their knowledge with everybody else. So if, if you're a one line, like if you're a first line and you're not taking action, ask if you're just like, okay, like, am I just in a stuck point? Like, why don't I feel okay sharing? It's kind of like imposter syndrome, right? Like they don't feel like they're knowledge enough to share, but we need you. We need you because you're the ones pouring over the books. You're the ones doing all the research. You're the ones that are doing all the scientific, everything that we need to know. Like we need your help. Like you're the Huberman labbers. And so it's like, we need. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. I was like, it sounds like Huberman. Yeah. It's like, we need those people to tell us what they've learned. So everybody in like the one through threes, like I said, it's kind of how you learn and ingest information. Everybody has a place. And so there's something great about being a one, a two, a three, like any number, right? It doesn't matter what your profile is. It's just like, it is like you have your place. And so other people don't learn the same way you do. So it's really important that when you know something, you share it. So are you able to give examples of like well-known people with just one number or is that too hard? That's a bit difficult. Um, but yeah, so it was funny because um, there are certain ones you can pull up. And so the other The thing with the ones or with profiles in general is, like I said, you could have a one in your profile, but not know it so much your one if it's on your unconscious side. So it's kind of something and picking people based off of profile numbers can be very, very difficult. Hell, picking people off of a type can be difficult because we've all been conditioned to act a certain way. So that's why I like human design. Like that's why it gives you permission to be who you are before everybody told you who you should be. Because a lot of times we'll all act one way and then you'll start reading on it and you're like, no, these things do come naturally to me. And then the more that you start leaning into those, the more aware of it you are. So a lot of times you'll meet people and you'll be like, I would have never thought they're a generator or I never would have thought they're a manifesting generator or projector. 
And then you start to see when they understand that they can actually act like themselves or how they were initially designed, Mm -hmm. then you can start to see it a little bit more. I have a quick question. So I'm a two six because the Mm -hmm. six is the conscious, the two is the unconscious, right? Can those be flipped? Can can someone be a six? Or no, you're a six. You know, you are a six two. Okay. But could are You're, there two sixes and six twos and it's different? So so all of the profiles, so if we go through, yeah, so some of them flip. So like you get there's a one four, two four, two five, three five, three six, four six, uh, four one, five one, five two, six two, six three. So there is no two six. There's a two five and a two four. So it all, yeah. And so that's just like another like play in it and like how people can be matched. And you can, um, you won't have double numbers except for, so like nobody's going to be a four, four, like things like that. Um, except for the, I believe it's the six, three, and the only reason, yeah, the six, three, the only reason the six, three is considered a double is because the six, and you're going to love this, um, Emily, the, the six, the first portion of your life, you live as a three. So you are that trial and error experience learning. So for six threes, they're essentially three threes for the first entire part of their, the first section of their lives. And so the sixes evolve. The sixes are very cool. Like you go through different stages depending on your age and what's in transit. Um, But yeah, besides that, some of them slop, slop, flop over and other ones do not. So with, um, yeah, like with the ones you might not notice that you're a one until you start That's to her aggressively to it. scrolling. If anyone's, if anyone's yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I was no, like, okay. Well, I was trying to see. I, I wanted like, to make what sure. The hell I'm is like, that sound. It's oh, fine. you can it, hear it. Yeah, it adds to the character <gasps> of that. Oh. Episode. It's great though. We love it. Keep scrolling. My aggressive scroll. <laughs> well, and what's funny about that too is like, so like types. Like I'm a projector, but if you saw my calendar, you would not think I'm a projector. Because I'm constantly doing so many things, but I'm constantly around other people. So like my tactic for stealing energy is real. And not to say that projectors don't have their own energy, but like when I'm out and about and around people, I can just like keep going all the time. So I don't present really as a projector as far as like what my energy level would be considered to be. And I think we've talked about this before, but Whitney has a video of me sitting next to Mac at like this, we were at the mood board session. And Max, like, she's a manifesting generator. She's a freaking powerhouse. And she's sitting there calmly gluing. And I'm, like, rocking out next to her. Like, yeah, I'm just, like, vibing off her energy. She's totally chill. I'm off the walls. It's like I was just stealing everything from around me. So you can't really – sometimes I'll be like, that's a manifesting generator for sure. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's a generator. A lot of the times it's a yes, no questions. But as far as types and profiles, there's so much conditioning that sometimes it's really hard to tell. That's key, the conditioning, because human design is all about deconditioning, bringing you back to yourself. For sure. And if you look at like Whitney, your chart, um, so typically you need to do more deconditioning for your open or your um, undefined centers. I don't like open because open means that you don't have a single gate activated versus undefined, which just means it's white. Um, But so... Whitney, your Ajna and your crown are undefined. And so typically that's where you have more deconditioning to do. And then with Emily, you are defined from your, or undefined from your spleen up. So your ego, um, your identity, your throat, your Ajna and your crown are all undefined. So it's, these are more places where you take in other people's energy, outside energy, and you amplify it. So that's where it's really great because you get to learn in all those places. But a lot of times you learn things that condition you in a way that's not, it's, it's farther away from who you really are. Then we go to the twos. I love twos. Twos are great. And they're, they're, they're funny to me because twos are the hermit. We've discussed this quite a bit, Whitney. Like I pursue her, I chase her around. And what's really funny is that people are drawn to twos, but twos, like to have their space 
and twos are very choosy. And so I stalk her, which is fine, but I don't suggest that all of you do it um, because sometimes they get really frustrated. <laughs> yes. I don't feel like, I don't, I don't know. That's, That's my not self. It's the frustration. I mean, I feel like Whitney has to track me down sometimes too because I hermit pretty hard. So, yeah, but you but have I'm a two. Also two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got a two. Yeah. yeah, both of you. Thank you for meeting me here today. Like coming out of your little show. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, what's cool is so you guys are the gurus. The second lines are guru. It's inherent knowledge. It's naturally gifted. You know you're on the right track when you can't explain your gifts. Like it's just you have this inherent knowing and somebody will say, well, how do you know? And you're like, I just do. And if you ever feel like you're trying to justify why you feel a way to somebody, just remember like you don't have to do that because you're not going to have an answer for them anyways. And if you just say like, I don't know where it came from, like nobody can argue with that. And also mm-hmm. the more Except that- Except on the wassail. <laughs> when I got screwed over on the wassail because they were like, you have to show your work. In the fourth grade That's wassail? unfortunate. That is like a... I, they didn't have it when I was in fourth grade, I don't think. It was the middle school. I was in middle school. Mm. And we were like the test crew because, you know, I'm older than you. Yeah. So it was... You are a few yeah, years. they were like, you need to show your work. Every math uh, thing, but I just remember that one specifically when they were like, you need to show your work. And I was like, okay, but I just did it in my head. I know. So that, I mean, it it leads into conditioning if you are a pleaser and and buy into structures like I did. I also have bad memories on the wassail. No wassail. Not that I show my work now, yeah, but. Yeah. Well, I'm older than both of you and I don't remember the wassail. So either I didn't have to take it or. You didn't because it m- my class is like probably two under you and we were the test. So it didn't matter for anything for us. And that's also why I was like, fuck <gasps> this test. <laughs> like, why am I I'm too under <laughs> showing you, my work on something that doesn't Maybe. Yeah, matter? I don't know. There's, there's here, here's a test and it doesn't matter, but you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Got it. Welcome to education. Yeah. No, and you're a manifesting generator, which means nothing's linear for you. So you jump mm-hmm. around anyways. So even if you show your work, it probably won't be correct. Um, like in their eyes. My dad got called into parent teacher conferences. And when we were in the, I think I was in the eighth grade and it was parent teacher. They called him up to the front of the room and they were like, we're going to need you to do this, this math equation. And he was like, okay. And he did the equation and the teacher was like, okay, you have the right answer, but even your approach is wrong. I don't know how you got it. And my dad's like, well, this is just the way it works in my head. And that's how he had taught me. So they were questioning me and I was like, well, I'll show my work and I would show it. And they're like, well, that's incorrect. And I was like, but I have the right answer. So then I watched my dad have the same argument with the teacher, basically like, no, this is the way. And they're like, but it's not the right way. And he's like, but the answer is correct. They're like, but it's not the right way. And he's like, don't know what to tell you. (laughs) I know. I have that conversation with my husband all the time too. And I, this is how I have my team now, my small team, because I'm like, I have this conversation with my husband. There are different ways to get to the same result. Like if you just care about the result, then you shouldn't care about how I get there. And I, I empower them to just get there. I don't care how you get there or when, what times you work, just as long as you're giving me what I asked for, then who gives a fuck? Well, because I was like so damaged by all that. (laughs) Well, and your husband's a projector. So he sees systems. Systems work for him. Yes. He masters a system. And so if it's working, he's like, why are you deviating from the system? Mm-hmm. I can't follow systems to save my life. Same. Literally. I can write them out, document them, put them in a folder, and I'll never look at them again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm I really organized, don't even try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When this I is- appear organized, it's because it's one of Emily's assistants who <laughs> does it for me. Same. It's definitely my assistant. I, I need that. I need that. I'm going to be contacting you. I need it. <laughs> yes, I, really, you I mean, I organize things pretty well, but I also need to delegate better. I think all of us do. And that's conditioning. Most of us have been conditioned. Like you do it yourself, you finish it. Like you start something, you finish it. And that is so incorrect for like 90% of designs out there. Like it's just, 
it, it just really is like when you start something, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Like it's just, it's pretty simple. Stop doing things you don't like. And I understand it's not easy to like totally outsource everything, especially when most people that come at me on this are parents. They're like, well, I can't just like ship off my kid. And I was like, okay, like obviously it's a little bit different, but boarding school is yeah. a thing. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding, yeah. but like. It's true. You can, can you ship off doing... your kid if you really wanted to. Just you can saying. do it with puppies. You can do it with kids. Like, yeah. like you can figure it out. <laughs> but so the the two is like you guys are the naturally gifted ones, right? Um, you, and you, right? You are too. I have. I am not a two. I'm a three five. I am the equivalent of oh. hell on wheels. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, but that's that's just kind yes, of yes. You are. <laughs> I. <I'm, laughs> I'm trial and error. Like I will try anything once at least, but we'll, we'll get to me. Um, the two is, so basically you guys, you learn best by being self-absorbed. Like it's very important for you guys to be health. I call it healthily selfish. Selfish got this really bad rap a long time ago. Like, oh my God, you're being so selfish. And especially when it comes to women, people projected it on women a lot. You're being so selfish because you're not giving up everything for everybody else. And so like men going out and working X amount of hours of days and blah, 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 or men going out and doing all these like things for themselves or going out golfing, for example, like these things that are typically men with their bowling leagues. Nobody was like, oh, that's so selfish of them to go do this. They were like, no, it's great that he has a work-life balance. And women, it's like you're meant to stay at home and take care of the kids. And then if you have a job or you have some other plans or you're going to go do something that doesn't involve taking care of somebody else, all of a sudden you're selfish. So it's one of those things that just kind of, if you look at it and you're like, okay, is what I'm doing healthy? Great. Then it's it's selfish in a good way. And it's how it's supposed to be. It needs to be healthy. So healthily selfish is like, especially necessary for it too. Um, very, very nece- necessary because you develop like your gifts the best when you're self-absorbed. And this is processing, playing, like you guys need play. That's a big one for you guys. Um, and you enjoy alone time and you need it to recharge. And this is like, you're in your, are you in your shed? I am in the shed. Yes. So it's It's like you have your disconnect space, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have Mm -hmm. your alone time. Um, you know, like a lot of twos. And I've heard that in other countries, they call them other, other things, but like the Irish exit is big on twos. Like Whitney's perfected it. Like it's, I do that. It, I mean, we didn't meet for almost what a month longer because I was like, there she is. And then there she's gone. It was like, she was just mm-hmm. this legend that was disappearing left and right. And I was like, oh, okay. It's like, she's in and she's not. And twos are very choosy. <laughs> um, and they don't like other people encroaching on their space. So it's one thing to have your shed. It's one thing. Um, it's another thing to have 15 people banging on the door of your shed. It's not something that makes you feel happy or at home. It's like if you're in the bathroom and everybody's like constantly trying to come in and bombard you all the time. It's like you need your own space. You It's why you're a hermit. Like you need your little like shell space. Is this why I'm so bad at responding to text messages? <laughs> because I feel be. like I have to be all the way available all the time. And I'm like, no, like, sorry. You don't get – Whitney, I think you're the one that said it. It's like it's not fair that – maybe it's not you, but like that it's just expected that you have access to my energy at literally all times. It's weird. Yeah. It's a weird concept. The phone doesn't own me. Yeah. And people have a lot of reactions to that. And I don't – I'm like, that's yours. I don't control how you feel about me not being completely available at all times. <laughs> well, and I think that that's just not – that's that's definitely deconditioning, which is great. And I don't think it's necessarily a two thing. I think they're healthy boundaries. And that's something that everybody can benefit from. Because like you said, just giving somebody rampant energy sucking power over you is not worth it's not worth it. And purposely not responding or saying like, hey, I'm not gonna respond between these hours, you're probably gonna be better off by saying like, having an auto response to just say like, Hey, got it at this time. I'm not responding. Or, you know, you can put it into play just so they get a response. They know you're not ignoring them. They don't go on some downward spiral, even though it's theirs to take. It's just, especially with like Whitney, you being a manifesting generator, manifestors need to inform. And so the more you inform people, once again, that's not asking for permission. It's just letting people know what you're doing. You're like, Hey, cool. Got it. I'll get back to you tomorrow. 
especially with being oh, yeah. emotional. I, I have anxiety around not communicating that to people. And a person who does a really great job of their autoresponder is Kaylin, who's been on this podcast and who Sam has read. And she did it for herself to reinforce her own boundaries. And she told me in her autoresponder, this is, I I look at emails twice a day. These are the hours that I I look at them, expect a response at this time, but right now I'm focused on my clients or whatever it was. She did it so well. And I asked her about it when I interviewed her because I was so impressed by her autoresponder that she has on all the time, not just sometimes. Well, and the cool thing about that is that the more that people, like, so she did it. It's so funny. So we're all so worried we're going to offend somebody, right? And yet she did it and you're like, wow, that's genius and I respect it. So then she's giving you permission to do it and then you do it and you're giving somebody else permission so we can all stop being so terrified of our phone dinging for no reason. And we're like, oh my God, who is that? Like somebody knocks on my door. I'm not home. Do you ever hide? I I hide. (laughs) Yeah. I do. I do. I freeze. I freeze. Pretend you're not home. But maybe that's like a millennial, elder millennial thing in us too. I don't know. Because like my parents always went to the door. Yeah. Yeah, no. they answered the phone too. Yeah. Every time it rang. <laughs> yeah, every time. I'm like, pretend you're not home. Yeah, yeah. I didn't answer the phone once and it was my mom. And all of a sudden somebody's banging on my back door like the police are here. And I was like, oh, that is weird. So I froze again and then I get another phone call and I can hear her from my porch. I didn't answer my phone. So she came like she drove over and then expected That's- me to answer the door. Next level. My mom <laughs> attacks on all fronts, but not usually in person that way. Sometimes she surprises me, but I still, yeah, she has to text me. I'm at the door. That's uh, see, yeah. And my see, dad the does thing that is- too. He calls. I'm at your door. I'm like, I'm busy. I'm like, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. He's the best. He like always brings me flowers and stuff. It's so sweet. But Aww, like it's that's nice. Yeah. It's well, nice. and what's what's different for you guys too is that like it's ironic, but the more that you guys hide, the more people come to find you. I know it sounds, it's the two thing. It's like I'm the more, laughing. typically, <laughs> well, typically if you're doing your two thing and you're being like selfishly healthy and you're doing, you know, like you're honing your craft, everybody's like, I want to see, what are you doing? Like, wh- what? I want to be, and they want to be part of the cool kids club, which is like a two. Um, so basically you want to do anything that feels natural to you. Do it in your own way. Screw the wassail instructor or whatever they said. You were fine. Um people will see you for doing it and they'll be calling you into something new. And then it's up to you if you decide it's the right call. So it's like, do you want to answer the phone for this person? Like you get to choose because if you say yes to too many wrong phone calls, then you don't have room for the right ones, right? Eventually you'll burn out. And so that's a big key for you guys is to like say yes when it feels aligned. And that's why you don't answer the door, which is smart. The weird lines. Okay, so we're into the threes. <clears throat> the third lines. This is the martyr. I'm a three. Um, Emily, you were a three for the first uh, 20 to 30 years. I was going to we'll say 30, get, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, so you're a three for the first section. Um, so this applies to you also, and wit, this applies to your son, because he's a three, five also. So the threes. So the threes learns by life experience. If somebody says it's hot, we're going to freaking touch it. We're naturally not afraid of failure. Like it is flat out. If we don't fail, we don't progress. Um, threes are naturally likable. Um, they're resilient. They're innovative. They're always evolving. It is all learning through experimenting, trial, error, Life can feel like a fucking roller coaster. Like I can attest to this. It is very much like ups and downs. Threes we need to do in order to see if it works. It's a doing. Like if we're not actively doing, like somebody just telling us like, oh, this thing works. If we're not interested in it, that's fine. But if we're interested in it, we're like, okay, cool. That's how it works. I'm going to do it myself because I need to, I need to experience it in order to know, um, there are no there are no mistakes for threes as long as they learn something. And I like to say like there are no wrong choices, only consequences. This I think goes for everybody in reality. Um, 
And then sometimes we can get discouraged and not want to try things because we fail so consistently. Sometimes we're like, I'm sick of this shit. Like, I don't like failing anymore. I don't want to fail, even though that's the only way we really grow. It's more like, okay, dust it off, stand back up, let's go. And so certain aspects, it's, there's there's that fear there, that shadow of not wanting to do something. And like, I'm sure you see this in your kid, Whitney, where like, he's like, oh, like, cause he's pretty reserved. And so he's like, yeah, yeah. But like the way he's going to know whether he actually likes it or not is going to be to try it. Yeah. It's interesting to watch him. Cause I'm like thinking as you're talking, did he come out conditioned because he, but the key in what you said is if he's interested, then he'll do it himself. A lot of things he's just not interested in. <laughs> like he doesn't, he's very interested in Legos. He's very like engineering brain. I even told him the other day, I don't think I ever had Legos. Like I was not interested in Legos. I don't care about Legos. The amount of Legos that he has and what he can build, just like free build is incredible. So he'll get into things that he cares about, but otherwise he's just like, like I'm going to sit this one out. And turns out he wants to sit out a lot of things. Well, manifestors really like their space, like very much like their space. Yeah. And he said that it's so cool for me. Like I reinforce this every time, but it's so cool for me to know their charts because I'm hearing things that are his true self. He says them already at five and was saying them before that of like, I just want to be alone right now. That's not something that we ever say in those words, but he's able to speak like from his soul of this is what I need right now. And that I, I have to honor that every time he says it. That is so freaking cool. I, that's why I love I love, like, I got goosebumps because I love when people know about human design and they're like, I can only imagine the difference for all of us when we were younger, if our parents understood our designs versus, I mean, they're all doing the best they can with the tools they have. Right. Um, But if they had understood that there's a system like this and you're like, oh, okay. Like you've said before with your daughter where you're like, oh, at first I didn't want her to be people pleasing and like that subservient behavior because she liked cleaning and helping. But then you realize that's just something she naturally like is driven to do. And so it's super cool because you don't have to try to condition something that's naturally in her out of her. And the same with him. It's like, okay, they've got this like really safe space where they can get recognized for who they are. And then they just get to roll with it which is freaking amazing. They're just got like a leg up, which is, re- I, I think it's so cool. Like so exciting. And with manifestors, they do like, I have a friend who's a manifestor. And one of the first things she said was like her love language is asking her when she wants to be by herself and like not taking I offense by it. Right. Like not taking yeah. offense by it. Like your son likes to do it. Right. It's like manifestors like having their own space. My friend's son is 14. He lives in St. George and I was going to go, um, I didn't get to chat with him enough because I was going to be like, oh, okay, you're a manifester. So let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, he's all, or he's, yeah, he's almost 15. Jeez Louise. Um, but yeah, it's so cool because they like their own alone space and people can say like, oh, they're a loner or, oh, they're over there. They're antisocial. Um, and their aura is less squishy. Like I say, um, generators and manifesting generators are very, very well received because they're very squishy, like enveloping aura. If they're in the right frame of mind, if not, obviously they could, anybody can be like not great to be around energy wise, but manifestors they're a lot of times their aura can be almost, um, repulse, like repulsive isn't the right word, but it's more like, um, you get kickback from it. So like when you're around people that manifestors, it's almost like, you know, like a big squishy ball versus like a small, like hard red, like round ball, like that difference. It's like hard to penetrate into their system, right? Like they're, they don't feel as welcoming. It doesn't mean they're not like loving, caring people. It's just, it's not the vibe that they necessarily give off. And so a lot of them can feel a little bit like, like they're not one of the, like one of the group or that nobody wants to be friends with them or like, Hey, nobody wants to do what I'm doing. And this is where they get on the train station basically. And they're like, Hey, like I'm going this way and people will come with them. They just need to be in the know that like those superficial friends or whatever that are around you, like, like if the ones that are not there would be like superficial connections that you just don't have space for. And so the people that are for you are for you. And those are going to be a lot deeper connections. Like manifestors have like Mm -hmm. a tighter circle. 
Yep. I've already been telling him that at five. Like we had that conversation yesterday. He had said, I don't, this kid isn't my friend anymore because he wants to play sports and I'm not interested in the sports. And, and I appreciated for him that he stood in what he wanted to do and was totally cool with people not coming along. I make the mistake too of like, who asking him, who are you friends with right now? Or what do you do together? And it's, just so different than it was like when we were growing up, I think, because it's, we just all, I don't, we didn't have this like knowledge in of ourselves, obviously, when you're small, but like, for me to be able to reinforce that it's okay that his friend is going over and playing soccer and he's not participating, he can do whatever he wants, he can stand alone. And that's so cool for him to like, be confident enough to stand alone and He'll find his people and he has, but you always want them to be like popular and everybody wants to play with them. And that's just not how it's meant to be. Well, he's going to be happy. And that's the difference. He's going to be well-adjusted, self-confident and happy. And, you know, it's funny because as kids, we all inherently know who we are. We do. Like we come out saying like, this is like, like you're giving your kids space to do it. Right. So that's the difference is that not everybody has had the space to do it. So as children, we know what we want. We know where we want to go, but we're just constantly told no, or this is the way you're supposed to. Like we were all jammed into these little boxes. Right. So for him, he's like, he has no problem freely speaking. Like, this is what I want and what I don't want. This is me and this is not me. And you're like, okay, cool, dude. Let's roll with that, which is great. And that's how, that's how he's going to keep building. And he might be super popular. He might not be. He's going to be whatever he wants, honestly. Like that's what's going to come out of it is he's going to be self-assured enough to know if something's for him or something's not for him. And then the people that are like, oh, hey, cool. The five people around you like kind of dictate where you're going in life. They're going to be like, this guy knows his shit. Like I'm going to follow this one around. Like that's how it's going to happen. Um, so yeah, it's just, ah, I love it. I think it's super great that he's like standing in his own, like soccer's not for me. Like those are where it's at. Well, and thank God. Because I am <laughs> not a soccer mom, especially in the Pacific Northwest. So you if, go, boy. If anybody needs a link to a jacket for standing outside. I mean, I don't wear mine outside that much because um, I'm not standing at soccer games. But I have a really great jacket for it if anybody needs it. Um, it's essentially a sleeping bag with pockets. Um, so the threes. So and this will suit him for sure. Is that like. Three is fine. They're brilliant at finding like one small thing that doesn't work in any given scenario. They are essentially the natural quality control. They'll look over and be like, that's a problem. That's a problem. And it feels sometimes as a three, you feel like you're nitpicking, but other times people are like, wait a minute, I need you to tell me that there's two, like I put two of the same word in that sentence or okay, like there's a flaw in that outfit or in that jacket and I shouldn't buy it. Like just very random, like little things, but it's, legit natural quality controller. It's like, oh, I see a kink in this hose. Let's fix it. And a lot of times people will, they'll stay quiet. These are the people that like would see something in your teeth and not say anything. They're like, ooh, you know what I mean? Because they don't want to offend anybody. It's like, oh, I don't want to say anything. It's like, they're the first ones to notice that it's there. And then we need you to speak up though, because nobody wants to walk around with shit in their teeth. Like it just doesn't work. But also if you notice that something's wrong in a system, say something. Um, I mean, obviously in a space where it's going to land, like you don't just walk up to a stranger and basically tell them like that something's wrong with them. But if you, if you're in a right space a three, like definitely they pick out everything that's a little bit off. And when they report back, it's giving them self's permission, um, to help everybody else have their natural insight, which is really helpful. Um, and then you get over into the fourth line, which, so Whitney, this could be your second half. So you have a natural gift. You guys are the opportunists. You have a natural gift for forming close relationships. Um, you, opportunities come through people that you know. The quality of your life is typically defined or determined by the quality of your relationships. And so it's very, very important for you to surround yourself with people that align with you. Um, and this being a two, four, two, fours are cheesy. You guys are cheesy, choosy. You guys are the VIP, like balcony party when you're, Emily's cracking up. The two, four is like, 
because you have both sides. You're choosy and it's like the VIP, like you, you don't do well with acquaintances, but you connect people. You connect a lot of people. And so you're a networker, you, um, but you, you network with people you like care very deeply about, like it's a farther connection than just like, oh, Hey, we're all in a room. It's like, you really want yeah. to be connected to them and on something that's like deeper. And this is where like the two with the two being a hermit, it's like the two, four, this is where I think we've talked before. Like you walk in, you drop your information, you kind of roll out. It's like people need your help. They want you to connect them. They want you to bring them to a place where they can like network and they can like when you had the your last speaking gig, it was like you go in and you chat with everybody and you give them all your information and then you can roll out and they're still reeling on all that information you gave them. It was necessary for you to go, even though for a two, it's hard. It's really hard for a two to mm-hmm. be like, okay, I'm going to leave the comfort of my own home and I'm going to go to this place and I'm going to stand up in front of all these people. When in reality, I don't always feel like I want to be seen, but it's necessary yeah. for you to be seen because everybody else benefits from it. It's almost kind of evil because it's like, I don't want to be around a lot of people, but I'm a natural networker. So I have to like have all these very specific conditions under which I network. Cause like I've even, I mean, Danica knows this. I tell her all the time, like when you have a big event, I don't like it. (laughs) When you have the small events, like you'll see me there if I know like one or two people and then I'm like comfortable and it feels very intimate and not like networking. It just feels like connection and relationships. Whereas like I get too stressed out by too many people. I can't people at that level. And that's just who I am. Well, and that's like with, so with the four, a lot of times people see the four and they think community. And so they assume like you're always on for people. And the thing is, is that you need that recharge. So you're on until you're not you have the energy to do community until you don't. And so that's a, it's almost like a black, it's like a light switch. Like you just need to know when you need to work it and when you don't, because being on all the time, you're not going to be happy about it, especially if it's like low grade, like type connections or like surface level. Um, But yeah, it's like you have energy until you do not. And then you need that recharge. And that's the hermit on top of the four. So you've got like, kind of like a little bit of a double, like disconnect that's necessary in order for you to, to just be in a, in a right place with you because you have such a powerful influence with your close connections. Like, I think that's why, like, so we see each other once a week and it's always something that's super, like, it's powerful. It really is because like you come in with this energy and it's so great. And then like, you know, it lasts for a long time, even after you're not in like the vicinity, like your power is just like stays. And let's see if we go to the fifth line. So we're on five. Um, this is the heretic. This is safe. So the I just looked, sorry to interrupt you. I just it. looked at Bianca's again and it's a five, two, not a six, two. Okay. So she's a five. So this is going to be her. So she's got a little bit of the hermit on the back end. Um, and then, uh, this is her on the five. So she's got, so she, you said she's a five, two. Yeah. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is save the day energy. Other people detect that energy. She can interact with anyone. Um, and so can your son actually, cause he's a three, five. Um, they both have the ability to influence many people. They're the opposite of you in the fact that they are good at universalizing things and interacting with the masses. It's going to come in two completely different ways because like I said, he's that manifester that kind of wants his own space. Um, and she's more, I will wear every color of the rainbow and twirl. So the entire town can see me because she's just like, like she's magical, right? So yes. with those two being different, like it's funny because they're both fives and it's just a different like uh, nuance of the five itself, but they're both charming and extremely persuasive. Um, people are drawn to them. Um, and then they're meant to help others by being a teacher, right? But also through serving as like a mirror to reflect things back to people. They both need to follow their strategy and authority and be clear and deliberate with their communication. Um, that's going to basically lead them to the right place, the right people, the right experiences. And it sounds like Oliver's really great at saying like, these, this is my place and this is not my place. Like I want to be over here building something. I don't want to be on the soccer field. And he's communicating that to his friends. Like, Hey, like this isn't for me. And they're like, okay, cool. Like, um, 
the fives, the three five itself. So your son, that is where he's coming to teach you everything he learns through experience. So he can teach on anything that he's actually experienced. Her being the five two. So for him, the five is, I'm getting a little off trail. Him, the five is the uh, design side. So that's like the subconscious, right? The unconscious side. And hers is the conscious side. So it's just kind of funny that they're a little bit flip-flopped there. The shadow side of the, the five is that everybody sees you. Well, okay. So I guess everybody sees you as like the hero sometimes. And so they can say, okay, like I'm going to say, let's head this way, right? Like pick up a torch and like, let's go this way. But they just have to make sure it's a porch, that, like a torch that they want to carry, right? And they don't have to be everything to everybody, but the savior factor will be projected on B is going to have it and she's going to know it. It's going to be more projected onto Oliver. I was speaking with a friend whose husband is a three, five, and the five is you want to help people. People come to you because they want help. And if you agree to do something, that's great. And you can help them, but you better fucking follow through. Because if you don't, they act like you're the worst. And they're like, oh my God, you ruined it. So for example, like say your sink is broken. I'm a three, five. So say your sink is broken and I'll say like, hey, let me take a look at it. And you're like, great. And then I walk over and I look at it and I say like, oh, actually I can't fix this. And then they're like, okay, well, thanks for breaking my fucking sink. Like that's the way it comes around. Because if you say you're going to do something and you can't follow through, you get projected back that you just basically shit the bed. Like essentially you just drop the floor out from somebody else. And so that's the shadow side. And that's why it's really important to communicate effectively and be in the right people in the right environment. Because somebody that loves you and is close to you isn't going to turn around and judge you for doing something that they, that that you weren't supposed to do. But at the same time, just don't agree to something if you do not plan on following through. Or if you just don't know, just say, I don't know. This goes across all numbers. If anybody asks you a question ever and you don't know the answer, just say, I don't know. Because there's no way to fight with that. There's no way to argue with it. And what's somebody going to do? Force you to try to learn. Um, So then we go to the six. And the six, Emily, so you've, Emily, you are the six two. And so go for it. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. So the six two. So the six line is the role model. So the first cycle of your life, right? Um, from birth until the Saturn return, which is late 20s, um, the six operates as a three. So this is where you are trial and error. You are experimenting. You are figuring things out. Then the second cycle for a six is the Saturn return, so late 20s until Chiron return around the 50s, um, is about connecting everything you've learned and formulating into something. So you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to run around. I'm going to do all the experiments. And then you take the next section of your life and you take it and you condense it and you kind of put it into something, right? Where you're like learning from it and building on it. Then like starting a virtual assistant agency or becoming a speaker and writing a book. <laughs> yes. These things totally make sense. So you did your first round and then you're taking everything you learned, right? And continuing on. You're doing beautifully, by the way. Um, Thanks. And then you are welcome. And then the second section. So they call sixes being on the roof. There's an analogy that goes basically one through six and it's kind of building a house. So the six, you're on the roof. So at this point, you're kind of beginning to withdraw a little bit and spend your time healing. And this is where you're reflecting on your lessons from stage one and you're observing the world from a more detached place. So that double downs on your two or doubles down on your two, right? Because you're a little bit farther back, just like you've taken a step back because you're on the roof. Everybody else is partying in the house. Like Whitney's in that VIP balcony on like the four. I'm on the stairs because I'm constantly in motion trying to figure out what the fuck's right and what the fuck's wrong. So it's like, I'm kind of in between. You're out here. You close the curtains. um, And Emily, you're on the fucking roof. Um, And so you will be able to reevaluate what isn't working and then begin integrating everything that is working because everything you've learned is wisdom, right? So now you get to kind of put it into play. Um, the third cycle, which is Chiron return on. So basically for the rest of your life is spent achieving harmony, harmony, like mastery, um, and just like sharing everything. 
like sharing everything you've learned. So now you're that guru. So you're like, I learned X, Y, Z. I put it in this pretty package that's digestible to not only me, but everybody else. And now I get to share it. And so that's, once again, where like the book comes in. Um, but I don't so want to be your... 50 and do that. No, but I mean, I will, but. Some people never get to do it. True. True. So it's like you get to this point where then, I don't want to say you're coasting, but you're kind of coasting. So this is where you're a role model, right? So at this point, you're like, I know my shit. And you get to step into that position and you get to fully engage as your authentic self and live your true purpose. Um, And people will, at that point, start looking up to you and come to you for like advice and wisdom because they're like, okay, she went through the shit. She basically turned it into something great. And then I now she's teaching on it and I want to know how she did it, right? So that's how everybody else is kind of following along the journey with you. Um, and then six is one, one thing about a six is that, so you're always seeking a soulmate and this is true to sixes. And so basically with a six in your profile, you are on a lifelong mission for objective truth. So you're constantly driven to like find wisdom or the like, positive in any given situation, right? Like this includes relationships. And so others will seek you out for your objective, like your wise perspective. Um, But your influence is like most powerful when you're living out your own values, like for others to see Um, with the always searching a soulmate because you've kind of done the life thing, right? Like you did life, you did life, you're still doing life. And you're at this point where you're wise and you're kind of beyond. It's like you're finding that perfect partner that can match you in the perfect life that you've now established for yourself. So for sixes, they're constantly going to search, but it's you're, it's not that you're never going to find anybody, but you're going to keep up leveling yourself and you need somebody to match that energy. And that's basically where it comes for you. And so it's um, it's one of those things that Especially for six is it's like, okay, I can stay where I am because it's comfortable and it's doable. And this is life in general, relationships, jobs, everything. It's like, I can stay where I am. But like, if you're, if you're in this position where you're kind of like, okay, this is like, I'm complacent here. And like, this is good enough. That's not how you're meant to live. Like sixes go through three processes to get to the point where they need to go. Like, this is your fucking journey. So for you, it's going to be one of those things where Instead of just staying where you are because it's, okay, it's good enough or it's, hey, this is where I am right now. Okay, great. You keep growing and you're going to outgrow the things around you. And so you want to be able to give yourself space to take in the things that are meant for you and the things that are coming for you on your level versus stunting yourself or saying like, fuck it, I'm going to call it. And this is where it gets a little bit more intertwined with like where you have other open center or undefined centers as a, um, just in your chart as a six where you have undefined centers and depending what conditioning comes in there, it can perpetuate the staying in certain relationships, jobs, um, homes, environments, basically everything like kind of holding on to them a little bit more because you're, you're not meant to, but you've been conditioned to. And so the six, yeah, the six is building. The six is amazing. Like I've heard people say like, oh yeah, the six, you get your teeth kicked in. I want to be a six. (laughs) It's like the sixes. You you get your teeth kicked in, you lick your wounds, and now you're a fucking guru who typically gets rich. So it's like that's your journey. So you get you get to reap the benefits of getting your teeth kicked in. I'm I'm a three. I get my teeth kicked in for life. I mean, I'm kind of loving it, but it's like one of those things. You learn I mean, from yours. I I mean, I learn, but I keep I keep going. Like that is funny because like yeah teeth have been kicked in, made it something good, still working on that. Yeah, it is very true for me. Very true. I'm jealous. I I find I contradict myself though a lot. Like, yes, I'm meant to be this leader role model person, but I hermit so hard. It's like a constant battle with myself. Is that true? Or Or it's a balance. Right. Yeah. I mean, because if you can't be on stage all day long, Right. So you can't be a lot of us. We all beat the shit out of ourselves for the things we have and we don't have. Right. But, you know, if you think of it like, okay, like 
everybody's life at some point is a roller coaster. Cool. Ups, downs, ups, downs. If you get rid of those ups and downs, you're fucking flatlining. You're dead. You're no longer here. There's a reason your heart goes up and down. There's a reason your life goes up and down. Like if you want to, if you want to flatline, like also where's the fun of that? Like, even though you're like, okay, maybe I don't want as many lows. Cool. You can start making changes that will get you to a point, hopefully where you don't experience them as often, right? Like I know for a fact, you can start manifesting going forward or making sure you're discerning on who you're spending your time with, where you're spending your time, you know, like, do you actually want to be on the soccer field or do you want to be putting eight Legos together? Like the more that you get to make choices that are based off who you inherently are and where you inherently want to go, the lows are going to be a lot more shallow, right? And so then you get the highs with it, which is just fucking amazing because none of us want to flatline. I've got plans for you guys. You're younger than me, but we're all going to be here a really fucking long time. <laughs> yeah. Papa and my mom and I are all going to live until 110. So we have time. 130. 130. Okay. Yeah. Or the, the how do we phrase it or longer or, you know, you always say what you want and then in the right time or more or sooner or longer, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. This is long- so informative. Yeah. I love the breakdown. It's really good. So yeah, it's, so once you, if you, when somebody's looking at their chart, it's funny because every single, the every single one of those lines, all of us have a little bit of each of them because like, okay. So for example, if you just go down the side of Whitney's chart, on your personality side, if you look at all the um, all the decimals and then the number, you're two, two, four, four, three, six, one, three, six, four, two, six, three, right? So like you've got a little bit of a mix in there. No fives. I don't know why I just noticed that. And then Emily, six, 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 two, six, one, three, three, two, four, four, two. The six is like, man, you're a solid yeah. six through. I know. Um, I that. And that's like, mm-hmm. No, that's great. That's great. Like you're just, it's, it just shows. So like Emily, your son is in 62. So if you would go, if, so anybody that's listening, if you look at the top, right, that's your son and your personality. And so if you look at 62, so you go to the body graph and you see where the gate 62 is. And so that means that point six, so your sixth line in that gate is activated. And then in your 61, the sixth line is activated. And so that's where it goes all throughout your chart. You've got these activations that even though it might not be your main number, you've still got them like down the left side in your design, Emily, you're two, two, six, six, three, four, two, four, two, five, one, six, four. So you've got a little bit of everything, right? So depending what's activated and where the transits are and everything's constantly moving, different things are going to highlight and you're going to be more six this day than yesterday, right? And so you have your predominant numbers for your profile, but everything is in there in a little bit of a mix. It's just not as prominent. It's so interesting because like, yes, you can, I could look at my gra- my body graph or my human design chart for hours and hours and hours and hours and learn something new every sing- single time you look at it. It's fascinating. Yeah. You can look at it for five minutes and learn something new every time. It's crazy. I love that's yeah, I love it. Oh, I just noticed you're a quad right. Um I'm a quad right. Uh your a quad right is that's where like the future is going. Um so your sixes and the the quad right, like that's just a double down. And when you when you see your arrows on your chart, if you look up near the noggin, um so basically your crown Ajna, there's gonna be four arrows. There's two on each side, two on your design side and two on your personality side. And depending whether they're left or right facing just kind of dictates um, uh, different things in your chart, like how you're meant to ingest food, how you're better meant to exercise. And also the numbers around them have something to do with that. So time moves very fast in human design, the deeper you get. So because everything's consistently moving in the solar system, right? Exactly where you were born at what time and then 88 days prior dictates what your body graph looks like, your main body graph. As far as the arrows and things like that, you know, we had split the, each gate splits into six lines. Each line splits into six more down below it. And so the farther you get into these, like you can get down to, so from 
from lines, like profile lines, then you go into colors, then you go into tones. And so these ones can get a little bit more gray area because if the nurse waited a few minutes to write down the time you were born. Um, and so these ones, you can take some of it with a little bit of a grain of salt because if there's any delay on your birth time, because those ones move so fast that things can change. But typically, um, if your birth time is pretty spot on, then yeah, you're a quad right. Specifically. That is wild. It is really it's, crazy it's, how much detail can go into it or does go into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy. Sam, can you, um, for our audience, like what, how can people work with you? Where can people find you? If people want to learn more, like what do you recommend? How do they start or like resources for them to dig into this a little bit more? Yeah. Um, you can find me. I'm at human aligned, um, on Instagram. I have a website that's also humanaligned.com. Um, I do readings. I do one-off readings. So if you want to just kind of do the 101 and dive through your chart, we can do that. I'm doing a lot of, um, partnership readings, um, or people want to dive into their kids charts. That's another big one. We've started doing, um, business kind of how basically you're meant to manage employees or how you're best meant to work together. That one's super helpful. And then I, you know, if you want to do like a bachelorette party, they're super fun because I like doing, or like, I call them like sleepovers. Like basically you get a bunch of women in one house and everybody pops on and you, everybody can have their own chart and you basically you can go through it. Communication is huge in human design. And I think that understanding how other people communicate is so freaking helpful. And it drives down so much friction that knowing how your friends, your partner, your family members, your parents, your kids, I mean, I will pull pretty much anybody's chart like the second that I'm like, oh, hey, who are you? Okay. Do you know exactly when you were born? Is there anybody you can text? <laughs> like, is your mom available? Like, I mean, I've said this before, but I have a good friend and he didn't know his birth time. And then he remembered that his grandma had three plates that she made commemorative plates by hand when they were all born. And it had him and his brothers and their birth times dictated on the nice. wall. And she's like... She's in the UK and he calls her and he's like, Hey, can you tell me, can you send me a picture of my plate? Like, that's and cool. so, he, yeah. So like, if you find out your birth time, that's super helpful. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of free information on sites. I love geneticmatrix.com. Um, I have a paid subscription, but that's because I have so many charts coming in and out. You can pop on and pull your own. If you have any questions, you can always DM me. You can send me a message. Um, it's just, it's, it's such a cool thing to get to know about yourself mm -hmm. and everybody you know. I just, I think. And it's as you can see, Sam nerds out about it and loves it so much. Yeah. We're even going to celebrate our, what is it? What do you call it? The our day that we were. design dates. We're going to yes, celebrate our design days. birthdays. Yes. I am <laughs> so excited. So, um, so my design date. So essentially your design date is 88 days prior to your actual birthday. Um, so for me, my design date is February 12th. Oh shit. That's in three days. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Real recording. quick. Yes. Happy um, design birthday. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And then <laughs> Whitney yours is May 1st. Ooh, maybe that's why I'm so attracted to Tauruses. It could be. You're like, it's kind of like a low key flex on yourself. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> And then Emily, yours is April 18th. April 18th. I love this. Yeah. What I love about it too, and this is me just being who I am, is August 1st is my birthday. If another May 1st, like I love the first of the month. Mine is 18 and 18 also, which is funny. That is funny. Yeah. Well, it could be 90 days, right? It's 88 to 90 days. Or it, well... Because all months have different amount of numbers yeah. in them. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, they were um yeah, the numerology definitely has a play. I'm excited. Well, this now. is amazing. Thank you so much. Everybody's gonna come find you, get readings. Um, this is kind of a new offer that you're doing, these like smaller group things that I've been pushing for and you've felt you're on your own too. So I'm really excited for you to be able to help more people, which is why on every discovery call, I'm like, okay, but like, maybe you don't need me because you need to talk to Sam first. So <laughs> let's make sure you're like needing this kind of communication and then you can hire me. But 
we love what you do and we're so excited to have you as our number one VIP guest. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm just excited that everybody is so interested in human design. It's so fun and it blows my mind on like a daily basis. So it just, yeah, it lights me up and I'm just so excited that I get to share it with everybody. Well, thank you, Sam. And Emily, let's do our awkward goodbye. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for being here. We love you and (laughs) we will see you next Tuesday. I'm just kidding. Not on Tuesday, Um, but I'll see you. (laughs) Bye. Bye guys. Love you. See ya. (laughs) This episode edited by Kay Gentry Shu. And music provided by Sloan Best.